Hi guys, Misty here. Welcome back for another episode of Color Your World with Diamond Painting along with me. Today's episode, we're just going to have another chat session. Um, and we are going to talk about this painting a little bit. So, since it's on the end, I'm going to do the first three rows, as per usual, with the card over there. cook breakfast in the background so you might hear some breakfast making noises <laughs> I think I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna change the way I have these in there I think what I'm gonna do is because I'm having a really hard time finding the numbers I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate because right now I have them 1 through 60 in my tray, but I feel like I need them to be in a better order. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in categories. Um, yeah, I need, what am I doing? Is that in the wrong row? Um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to categorize it and I'm going to put them in alphabetic order for the ones I have for alphabet. I'm going to put them in numeric order for the numbers and then I'm going to put all the symbols toward the end. This should be seven. Put seven over here so I know that seven is in the tray. Uh, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do, I think, um, because I have a hard time finding the numbers when they're not, number seven is not number seven, so it's really annoying. Number seven is number 50, so I'm going to fix that to where I have a little better of a handle on where, uh, where they are in the tray. Um, so I can, you know, move faster. So I think I spend a lot of time trying to look for them because it's like, okay. Why is my painting trying to escape? <laughs> it is! Oh my god! It needs to be clipped up there. Can you clip it? Yeah. Because there's too much weight on it up here. Oh, it's still like you can roll it up and clip it. So we took the kids to the doctor and had their annual checkup. The doctor called me last week and um, we had talked about some of my kids' health concerns and stuff. And um, so my three year old 
Bill has always had digestive issues. Um, he has to drink almond milk. His cow's milk will give him severe constipation. And so the doctor wanted us to discuss that further. So she's going to send us to a GI specialist for him to um, kind of try to get an idea of what's causing it. And when she took an x-ray of his of his stomach, um, they used some fancy words to say that his colon is like um, enlarged a little bit. And so um, she sounded concerned, but when she emailed me, she told me that she wasn't too concerned about it and that um, the GI doctor she spoke to didn't seem concerned about it. However, she's still sending me to a GI specialist for him, so I'm thinking there must be a reason you don't just, you know, send somebody to see a GI specialist if there's absolutely nothing wrong, so, um, and I seen on this TikTok, this lady, um, her son's name is the same, same name as my son. They were the same age. And, um, she was saying that her son, um, had severe constipation, um, that he had global development delays as well, um, speech issues. And so he couldn't really tell her you know what was wrong and stuff and just um, one night he started throwing up and had uh, really bad tummy aches and um, he she said that he also had constipation issues from from birth and so basically his story sounded a lot like my son's story and she said that um, he um, that night that the next morning after she she put him in bed with with her and he passed away from um, some kind of intestinal um, issue that when they did an autopsy I guess they said that it's super rare and nobody would have ever been able to figure out his issues unless they would have done an exploratory surgery so that freaked me out because her story sounded so much like my story with my son. Um, because of his um, pediatricians have always said, oh, you know, don't worry about it. Or, oh, this or oh, that. I mean, um, he, he, he went through a lot when he was a baby um, because he did not want to to push it out because it was painful um, and so he had to do suppositories and stuff like that and it was just you know it was really sad and I was like telling the doctor you guys gotta figure something out you guys gotta do something because you know this is not normal for a child and so they put him on mirror legs and he was able to start going on his own without me having to assist, um, you know, at like 10 months old, but like they just, they act like sometimes these doctors act like there's nothing wrong and there's nothing can be done. We don't know what, we don't know what's going on. Well, figure it out. Really? Figure it out because, um, these children and their parents are depending on you to figure things out because you know if, if the parents knew everything then we would never need to go to the doctor so it would it would get you know frustrating for me um and like i said they did not they had my my older son see a gi specialist because um, he had a failure to thrive for a while because I feel like my, my son and my husband have the same metabolism. 
Um, he can eat and eat and eat and eat and never seem to like gain any weight, no matter what he's eating, my husband. And so my, I think my son was having that issue too because he's always been on the slender side and you know, all of that. So, and we could get him to eat vegetables and fruit, no problem, but um, we struggled to get him to want to eat meats and um, you know, things, uh, things like that. So, um, whereas for our youngest, we have the opposite issue. We have, um, we have a hard time getting him to eat fruits and vegetables. Um, and have, um, he, he'll eat more meat, but for a while I'm like, thinking like, geez, are you like going to be vegetarian again? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, it's definitely, like my kids are picky eaters, so I always struggle for, I mean, it's always, it always seems like, you know, I offer them the food, they don't want the food. Have a scenario. Um, my sister thinks that I should make them eat it, but she used to do that to me when I was a kid because she's 13 years older than me. So she would often be my babysitter and she would try to force me to eat food. Uh, that I did not want to eat, and so I'm like, I'm not doing that to my kids. But it was, like, she thinks it's not, oh, it's not traumatic, but it was traumatic because I remember her forcing me to try to eat, like, um, spinach. It was actually kind of funny because, so, um, she wanted me to eat canned spinach. I think it looks like, so I'm like, I am not eating that. Uh, I think it was six or seven and she just she kept putting it like up to my face and like trying to put it in my mouth and she like tried to like grab my face to like close my mouth and I ended up pushing it out with my tongue and I thought I went on the floor when I when I pushed it out with my mouth and then um but I, but I guess it didn't because at one point I um, looked down and I saw something on my shoulder and I started screaming and freaking out because I thought it was a spider. <laughs> um, and so she's like, what is your problem? I'm like, I don't want to eat spinach. I don't like spinach. It's gross. Um, so if I could... If, usually in those situations, if I could get to the phone, um, I could call my mom and usually and my mom would tell her to leave me alone. <laughs> but, um, she, and she knew that, so, like, she would try to keep me away from the phone. Because she knew if I got, if I got a hold of my mom, that she was that she was gonna have to stop trying to do do whatever she was trying to do and like that meant that I wouldn't have to do it. So she, you know, tried really hard to not allow me to get to the phone. <laughs> um and, you know, because she was not my mom, so I would be like, you're not my mom, I don't have to eat it. Um, and I would prove it to her, obviously, by, um, by, <laughs> you know, telling my mom, she's making me eat this and I don't like it and I don't want it. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but... 
her parenting is definitely different than mine because she is more like, I don't know, it, she, she will spank her kids, I don't, I don't try to spank mine, so. Um, and all her, and she forgets what it's like to be a parent of a young, defiant kid, um, because her kids are grown up now, her, my, my 18 year old and her 18 year old are only a month apart, like a month and a half apart, so. Not a month and a half. They're like a month apart. So, um, there's ones in October, ones in December. So, um, so she forgets what it's like to be a parent of a younger, younger kid, especially boys. Um, uh, so, uh, I don't know what that symbol is. Sorry, I'm like having to look up a symbol. Purples. That painting definitely likes its purples. I don't mind though because that means that it will have a nice uh, shadowing effect on it. shadow color for it. Because when they first made it and they only made it like 40 colors, it was not. I was like, no. <laughs> We're not doing that. You we need more colors than that. So every time I get color 154 I swear it's like it seems like it's different colors <laughs> it's always a you know like purple but it's always like seems like it's different shades of of a dark purple like one of the one time it'll be like at, almost as dark as like a black purple and then the next time it'll be like a dark, just a dark purple, but not like a black purple. So, I always try to use the, the, uh, 
color that it comes with just because I don't want to have to try to replace any. So I'm hoping that my me and mine sent me enough enough of these um enough of these gems that I don't have to um and I won't have to you know use my spares because they are probably going to be different colors if I do that. So, okay, so let's I don't tend to want to do that. <laughs> It's like D's and E's are like the largest colors in these, so. It's like the many shades of blues and purples. Oh my god, this painting is going to be so freaking gorgeous, you guys, after it's done. I love it. And... My husband loves it because it's the ocean, but I love it because of the colors of that are in the, the painting. Like, I love the purples and the oranges and the reds and all of the, you know, all of the colors that are in it, like, that make it up. So, those, that's what I love about it. I love the color combination together. And I don't know what it is about stuff like that, but, like... For instance, when I was doing Twisted Blossom, like, I love the darker colors in, in the cherry blossom trees. So, whenever I look at cherry blossom trees, I don't tend to like the ones that are really light in color. I like the ones that are, um, that are darker. So, alright, so that's the first three rows done on that. And so that is my foundation. And now I can work on the rest of the section. So I'm curious to know if you guys have finished anything lately. My last official finish was Twisted Blossom. Uh, I am working on the one that I'm working off camera, which is a 60 by 60. I am probably two thirds of the way done with it. What'd you say? Two thirds of that? Yeah. yeah that's good. Two thirds. So, um, my husband's been making me work on that one because I was ready to full on work on this ocean wave some more, um, but he really wants me to get it, get the one that I'm working on done because we already have a frame for it, uh, hanging on the wall. So he's like, take a break from the ocean wave. I'm like, fine. <laughs> um, so then once I get 
that that one finished then I think I'll be working um, I'll be working on my diamond paintings from my mom but it's hard because I need to work on camera for that one I think so it makes it a little bit harder because at least with this I can um, work off of camera even though or you know just work on doing um, the time-lapse portion of it still so you know so at least it's still getting recorded um, I just realized I just realized that I don't have I don't have the flash on. So let me it's saying I can't turn the flash on yet. It's only at twelve percent, so I need to give it a minute to charge. So um Give it a few minutes to charge. I'm so glad that technology has gotten better <laughs> because um, waiting for this thing to charge feels like so ancient. <laughs> So, I pulled my, well, I had, my husband wanted to hang up our family portrait, and, um, I don't know if you guys, um, remember the story or what video it was in, but my, my five-year-old, well, at the time he was four, um, he kicked my, um, my diamond painting. It was in a huge, um, it was in a huge, let me can see it. Oops. Okay. Let's see. It was in a huge, uh, picture frame. And, um, so he kicked it over and so from a distance it still looks pretty good but if you look down in the in on the side like uh, right here uh, let's see sorry <laughs> if you look right here you can see it's missing a bunch of the a bunch of the diamonds and then like as you get further up um, you can see some missing you know on the tops and so you know it, it was very unfortunate um, and it makes me really sad to even look at it because it reminds me, you see there's some missing there at the bottom, um, over there as well. So, uh, but it makes me really sad to, to see because, you know, my, my son got hurt. Um, he has a scar on the top of his foot. Um, but it took me a long time to, to, to get this diamond painting done. <laughs> so I was, you know, I was upset that it, 
it hurt my my son's foot that my hobby caused him you know pain and whatever and like I kind of blame myself for not hanging up the the um for not hanging up the picture frame and just setting it against the wall but you know we had just moved and whatnot but still like I found that like that's not an excuse kind of a scenario and but you know it was it was unfortunate and um so it, my husband and I decided to make this the family family portrait wall um I also have my grandparents up here at the top um we're gonna do we're gonna do multiple families so uh, members that like we're gonna get pictures of his his grandparents and such uh and his parents um up there um eventually uh, we haven't ordered them yet so Alright, so I got that fixed now. Oops, hold on one second, guys. There we go. Alright. Alrighty. I was able to get I was wondering why I was having such a hard time seeing over here. It didn't even dawn on me that I didn't have my flash on this phone. But now we got it. No big deal. Um, I mean, it was, it's bright enough in here anyway um, for videoing. It's just... Um, I have to struggle so much with my eyeballs now. So. But my husband pulled the family portrait out because he's going to actually, I guess, try to repair it. He feels the way I feel, though. He's, like, really overwhelmed when he looks at it because there's, like, diamonds, like pushed over and and you know like going in all directions oh that's not the color I need um in all directions so excuse me um so he's feeling a little overwhelmed when he when he looks at it which is how I feel too when I look at it because I'm like oh Oh God, I don't even know if those colors go there now or if those colors, you know, like fell off and like, because there's a lot of the diamonds that actually just fell off uh, because when it, when the picture frame broke, it landed like accordion style all on top of each other and my concern was my child and I left it sitting there on the floor <clears throat> until um, pretty much like uh, so we, we rushed him to a uh, emergency clinic hospital thing that was like right in the neighborhood area that we live in uh, but they said that he needed to go to a children's hospital because um, it's not the right color. So he needed to go to Children's Hospital because they needed to repair the tendons in his foot. So, um, so he, um, you know, did that and whatnot. So, um, so then we were 
you know, in the ER pretty much practically all, all night, um, they, they tried to give him a sedative and, you know, they thought it was like maybe one tendon. So, um, if it was only one tendon, they could just repair it right there with, um, I think it was ketamine or something. They, they make your brain think you're sleeping, but you're really not. Um, and so they like, you know, put you out, but not out. Like they induce sleep or whatever it is. I don't even know. They explained it to me, but it's been a while. So, um, so they did that and, um, then they looked inside his foot more and were like, no, we, we have to actually take him to an, an OR and so we're, we're going to wrap it up for tonight and send you guys home and then I, we want you to come back in the morning. So we're like, okay. So we scheduled him for um, surgery that morning and then um, it took about two to three hours for his surgery and then he was all done. And freaking scariest thing in my life because you know I I've never had a kid um break a break a toe even a bone so I'm like what but you know leave it to to my five-year-old he he is the one that has gives me all my extra gray hairs <laughs> um he's always been a little bit extra <laughs> um so he, um, when he was born, he still had some liquid in his lungs. So he had to go to the NICU for five days and, you know, he's the biggest baby in there, but he didn't care. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, he, he was having, um, some rapid breathing issues and, um, whatnot. So they decided that they needed to, that they needed to take him, uh, into the NICU. And so I was pretty, pretty upset about it. Um, you know, I, I was definitely probably having some postpartum blues and stuff. Like, I wasn't like, I was like really sad that he had to be away from me and in the NICU. So, like, I would be like crying my eyes out every time I, t I brought him breast milk to feed him and stuff. And... So, you know, they kept telling me, there's nothing to worry about. Don't worry about it. it. He's fine. He just needs some time to clear out his lungs a little bit. And, but you know what, it was concerning because when, uh, cause you know, I was awake for my surgery because I had him C-section. So I was awake for it. And I wa so I watched them um, working on him when they first pulled him out, uh, you know, like got him over to the cart and everything and they were trying to clean him off. And, uh, I was watching them and he cried for like a few, a few minutes and then he stopped. And so I was watching them try to clean out his lungs then. And so it was concerning for me because I'm like, oh my God, he's like not crying anymore. He's not like, and they're like sh trying to get him to breathe. So but I didn't want to panic my husband because my husband's sitting there and I'm on the OR table still. They're still like doing whatever they needed to do. And I'm trying not to panic, but I'm watching the, the, um, nurses or whatever with, with him and I'm like oh my god they're like sh like struggling to get him to, to to breathe so I'm watching them shove the little bulbous thing down his throat and 
in his nose and trying to clean them out and um but i think that they were just they were um trying to see if he would um you know be able to breathe and and eat on his own because that was the problem he he was breathing so fast that he couldn't um he couldn't latch and eat comfortably because he was like um like breathing really fast so um so they had to um you know help clean out his lungs to keep him from having to breathe so heavy so um He's just bumping at the table. Barking at the birds out there. I hear a bunch of birds walking like crazy, like something's happening. <laughs> Let me see the dogs bark, I guess. painting is going really well like I thought it would take me longer but I'm actually enjoying working on it a lot like with my um with my family portrait I did that in like sections so so how I did it um is I wanted to know what the faces were gonna look like so I started with my husband's face. That's the first portion of it that I did. Um, because I was pretty concerned. Hi. <laughs> I was pretty concerned with how um, it was going to turn out as I was doing it. Because at the time... I didn't have a table that could sustain a giant painting like this. So I had to have it rolled up and I had to flip it over and turn it sideways and like do it in all these different directions. So, so doing that one was a little bit harder, I think, than it, than it has been on this, for this one. Now, the castle one probably might be a little bit harder. I don't really know. So. But anyway, um, so, um, with that one, um, I had it flipped upside down to do his face, and so, like, up close, the amount of colors that went into his face was, like, insane, so, but I was like, it looks horrible, I can't believe I bought this, and, like, I was really upset, <laughs> Um, but then when he, um, turned it the right way and he backed away from me, I was like, you know, actually it's really not that bad. Um, I wish it was a little more defined and like the colors of the face were a little, a little more, um, like normal color because... You know, we all have, like, this crazy peach outline in our faces, so. But it still came out pretty good, I think. Um, so. Hi, what you doing? What you doing? You awake? What? 
What? You staring at me? Go say hi to Dada. Go say hi, Dada. <laughs> he crawled all the way out here, smiling at me. <laughs> That's not normal. <laughs> not for him. He usually cries. So... I like when my kids wake up in a good mood. <laughs> um, especially my three-year-old. He seems to wake up moody often. He doesn't like to wake up alone. Um, so, and my husband and I usually get up before he does. So, uh, we'll be out in the in the other room by the time he wakes up, and so he sometimes will get upset instead of just getting up and coming out and finding us. He cries. So, it's a little bit. Um, frustrating for us because it's like all you gotta do is get up and come find us it's not a big deal but he does the same thing in the middle of the night too he'll wake up crying and one of us have to go get him usually my husband I'm like he's crying go get him <laughs> so um he doesn't just settle back down usually he's like he's kind of a cuddle bug I think he just wants to cuddle, 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 and I'm like, no, there's not enough room in here for you because you take up the entire freaking bed. I don't like how some of these line up. worry about about um, placing these down before all the rest of them are placed because I don't know if it's over far enough or you know because I set it on top of the block but sometimes squares are not perfect or sometimes the gems are not perfect so Theoretically, I should be able to put all of them down, no matter where they go, and they should all connect just fine, but it doesn't always happen that way. As we all know. So. These asterisk looking things look like they're white dots, kind of. They don't really look like asterisks too much to me, but... All of the trash from the, from the paintings that I do on camera, so that I have something to show you at the end when it's all finished, said, and done. Um... I'm definitely happy with these gems from Diamond, uh, what is it, Diamond Drills USA. Um, I definitely like them. And I will be ordering some AB Diamonds from them for a product um, in the future at some point. Um, when I get that painting. that they come out with more AV diamonds though because um, they are fun to work with. Fun, fun, fun! And it's, you know, awesome and everything. So, um, okay, so that is, no, that is not it. Um, I haven't decided how far over I want to go today, but uh, 
I'm gonna record as long as I can. Uh, it sounds like my breakfast is almost done, so I'm probably gonna have to. And it sooner rather than later. Um, but, um. Oh, I'm probably going to still work on this painting. Well, I don't know. It's it's really hard because my husband wants me to finish the 60 by 60, so, um, so I'm like back to only working on this one while I'm on camera. Okay, so I think I'll, I'll only go this far and then I'll be done with it for today. So I'll probably finish out on the time lapse. I'll probably have that um, sped up um, on the end of this so that you can see the square that I finish. Um, and it's gonna be a very small square <laughs> today, so. Like I said, I think I'm a slow diamond painter because I don't like to use the multi there. So, and when I do use the multi I don't use it conventionally. I use it differently so that I could do checkerboarding faster because I am really not a big fan of checkerboarding. <laughs> that much. So, um, I can't remember if I showed you guys how I checkerboard, but let me show you really quick how I do it. Um, so, these are number sevens. So, this is how I checkerboard. I put, oops, <laughs> wrong camera. Um, I put, I put one on each end like that, and then, and then when I put it on, I place it like, like so, like that, and then I do that again. But I do it in the opposite direction, like that. So that's how I check board. And then I straighten, if I need to, I straighten them out. But that's how I check board. And so, um, like, <laughs> I just went past the little block that I was doing. So that's just great. Now I gotta move them over. But, um, so that's how I, how I do it, you know, like, just continue doing it as a pattern. But, you know, I, I have a harder time, um, getting, um, I have a harder time getting things to work my way, the way that I want them to, so, um, Not all in their place, the place that they need to be. But. <sighs> what? You want me? Aww. Okay, so my breakfast is done. I'm going to end this now. So, um, at the end of this video, you will see this finished block um, from the time lapse. Bye, guys.
guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more diamond painting content.